Grownish, smartish, British. We are British, apparently. Uh -huh. What does that mean? That means you shoot things on the rooftop. Oh, yeah, it's That's what I'm saying, isn't it? <laughs> rooftop tie. Have we got? Have we got this? It's cut tie, tie, tie. Catch it, catch it, man. So you ain't catching it. That's what I'm saying. Let the girl, let her eat. Let, let the live. girl eat. You're gonna be chomping while we're doing this. Let her chomp. I know we are. Yeah, we are. Oh, we are. This is all being recorded. Okay, oh. good. Ty, make 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 sure you keep all of this in. I want all of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a loop. <laughs> Just fizz eat it. Well, jump, people like the sound Trust of people me. chomping. ASMR. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes Pick I like up. it. As long as you talk and eat. But if you're chewing bare loud and you're quiet, don't chew in my ears. <laughs> I remember I was talking to some girl once, yeah? And he was chewing so loud, it put me off. I stopped talking to him. I swear to God, that put me off. <sighs> bare crunching in my ears, like. You didn't, you didn't call him back? No, chewing. I said I can't. It put me off. That gave me the ick. So I'm like, no, it's <laughs> not going to work. Can we talk It's not going to true. Open mouth. Hold on, we're going we to get to Or like noise. Like, <laughs> like we get it. You're eating. It's the lip like... smacking. Then. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is brilliant. Keep all of this in. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm just like, close your mouth, man. We got... Just close your mouth. Let's, let's start this properly. Okay. Welcome. You are here to Grown Up British. I am Ben, a.k.a. Ben of LDN. AKA Uncle's favorite uncle. <laughs> and of course, we have. Hi, it's me, Fizz. Um, you didn't give your Insta tag. I did. I said, Ben oh, of LDN. Oh, shame, you did. See? Okay. I'm Keep It Fizz. Well, I'm Keep It Fizz on Insta, but I'm actually Fizz in real life. Mm. And today. We have a lovely special guest. Very special guest. <laughs> uh, my name's T, and you can find my social. So it's Mama T with an X. Mm. And then my, pod, my new podcast, which is not out yet, it's Culture Clash. <laughs> With K's, so culture, K, and then clash, K, and then two H's. Because last time I said with a dot. There's no dot. There's no dot. It's just culture clash. It's dead for now, but from January, we'll, nice. keep, it, we'll keep it popping. I have, but if you, is culture clash okay? Because there is another culture clash that is done by Red Bull. I checked it. I checked. <laughs> it ain't going to be like mine. It's okay. going to be different. Okay, it's okay. completely different. No, okay. but yeah, I've seen it. Well, good, welcome, welcome, Thank welcome you for to you. Me. That's good. It's always I'm lovely. I'm really to excited have. for you. It should be a good one. I'm yeah. nervous, but I'm excited though. I'm oh. nervous but excited, so that's good. The big uh, <laughs> elephant in the room, um, Heba is not here. She is taking a world needed break holiday. She's living her best life in Egypt. Oh, I know. well, good for yeah. her. Oh, good for her. I just want to feel the heat. I can feel oh, it spiritually. I'm like, I'm there with you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> literally, I'm there no. with her. Literally, she's, she's living a life in Cairo, so. Big up Mama Hebs. She's out there doing Big up Mama Hebs. I, I really wanted to meet her, you know, because I've seen your a few of your um, YouTube videos. I'm yeah. like, she's her energy just is unmatched. It's lovely. I love it. Lovely. Yeah, you guys you'll all... love her. I think you'll yeah. love each other. We'll, yeah. we'll arrange a link up soon. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right, cool. So how we love to start off things, uh, we always start off with a would you rather. So I've got a few, a few lined up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, cool. <laughs> this one, we'll start off with a... Uh, kind of a spicy one. Oh, <clears throat> like them chips. Chips? <laughs> they're not even like spicy. Them Chris. No, they're not spicy, guys. So, would you rather have super sensitive taste or super sensitive hearing? Super sensitive hearing. Why? Because I like to be aware of my surroundings. And I know that there's a lot of sounds that we can't actually hear from the human ear. Very true. But if I can hear to that extremity, yeah, I'll be loving it. You want to hear? You want to hear like what dogs hear and that high pitch and everything. High, yeah, high frequencies. You yeah. want to be like Superman, Superwoman. Basically, that would be irritating though, because if you think about the ringing in your ear, that's quite a high pitch. And yeah, but think can you can you switch it on higher. and off though. No, no, no. Uh, this is this is what, this completely, is completely like all this is, day. This is what you have. So whether you then go on to master it like Superman did, <laughs> and be like be able to. Take your glasses out. down and hear yeah, it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay, you need cool, your yeah. eyes to I listen. I think I would like. I would manage my my super hearing. That's what I'd want to do. So you taste or hearing? I'm a fat kid. It's gonna <laughs> be taste. It's gonna be. Well, how is that even a question for me, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> it's always oh gonna be the God. taste. I enjoy my food. I like to taste the flavors. So super sensitive taste. Obviously, there's downfalls to that. So if something isn't as tasty. Oh, mm. God, imagine. Mm. So you're going to taste everything. You might even be able to taste the particles in the air. Oh, Does that mean oh, I'll be God. able to tell what the weather's going to be by going? <laughs> mm. 
I think it's raining soon. Literally. No. It's going to start raining in three minutes. But the downside to that is... If someone walks by and they're not smelling the freshest, you might be able to taste Listen, it. Listen, it happens anywhere. Yeah. That's oh, that will make it me happens sick. anywhere. That will make me sick. I will gag literally. Seriously. Like, even at work, there was one lady oh. that stank so and I listen, it's really bad. <laughs> I li- my eyes were t- I wanted to cry. So I was like 10 minute meters away from her. And I'm literally trying to serve her from like all the way over there. Then I called one of my colleagues. I'm like, listen, I can't deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Please, Dennis, deal with it. So any stinky person at the time, I was like, Dennis, I beg you, you can deal with it. You're a man. You're a big, oh. strong man. You can do it. <laughs> I can't James do it. I, um, <laughs> I remember one time I got on the tube. Right, sorry. Side note. Random side note. Got on the tube once. Doing my journey, someone comes on a couple of stops later and they bought on this oniony, bio, potent, mm. pungent smell with them. Mm, 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 to mm. the point where I had to turn around and be like, <clears throat> who the hell is this? And I was shocked. I was really, really shocked because... It was a young, beautiful girl. She was dressed up, makeup done, hair done, but she stank. Of onions? Of bio, like oniony oh. bio. And I was just like, no. Nah, but you know I'd some people, look- it's how their house smells there, isn't it? It's the house smell. Some people it's have a like, straight like, body strong- odor. Oh no, then that's nasty. You can't mm. look cute on the outside and not clean well, yourself. That's why I'd wow. rather the reverse. <laughs> no, but seriously. No, but it's true. You I'd can't. rather look like crap and smell good. Than- yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, 100%, okay. I agree. I think for myself, um, I listen to too much music. The sensitivity in music might, I'm, I'm thinking it might hurt me. Will it hurt? <sighs> I like to play music. But don't loud. you think if you listen to music you and be... you've got those frequencies, you can hear more? Because with me, I, I like it. listen to like, you know, like meditation frequencies yeah. and like the sound of the ocean. Yeah. Just peaceful, natural yeah. sounds. Imagine listening to that in a heightened okay. Version yeah. like that you, will just you, put me able straight. To pick to... up the nature sounds as well. A hundred percent. Like take, I'll take the hearing over the taste then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I'll take the hearing. Taste <laughs> all the way. All right. Next one. <clears throat> would you rather help one person who needs it a lot, or make one hundred people lives a lot better? Make so you answer first. Actually, <clears throat> I want to hear what you have. When to say. you say, I know we don't do uh, variables. But when you say help someone a lot versus help a hundred people, oh, okay, okay, what okay. is the extent of the okay. help you're giving the hundred people? Would you would you rather help one person a lot who really needs it, or make one hundred people's lives a little bit better? But are these people? Do they need help? Oh, I'm gonna pick the person who needs help the most. most so you take the one person a lot. Yeah. Can you ask? Can you ask me that question again, please? Right, one more time. Would you rather help one person? person so you're yeah. helping one person mm-hmm. a lot who really needs who it. Really needs it, yeah. Or you're going to help 100 people just a little bit. I think one person as well, because then you can just put all your energy into that person who really needs it, and then they can go off and help someone else. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like p- paying it forward to yeah. someone else. When you do something small for the majority, it could be something as small as you open the door for them. Mm. It's, you know, in that moment, they'll say thanks, but it's forgotten. I don't remember who opened the door Mm. for me this morning, but I remember when a guy, I was struggling with my, getting my Oyster card out. And he was like, aha, now pay for you. Like, and he just tapped his card and then he got his oyster card out. And I was like, you really didn't have to do that. It's not like- Because I how can't... am I going to tap out now? <laughs> <laughs> so what's going to happen? It was happen? a bus, so it was <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Cool, cool. But um, it's, I will, I'm more likely to remember that and think about this guy in the future to be like, you know what? I'm going to pay that forward mm. too than for the person who held the door open for me. Kind yeah, because imagine trying to put all your energy into a hundred people. That's a lot of energy yeah. where you can focus on one person and give all your hundred percent to that person and then yeah hopefully somehow make, make a, a really difference. big difference yeah. In their life. yeah oh yeah that's true i think the helping the one person is a bit deeper because mm. you maybe get to know that person in and out understand that person what they're going through and really focus like you said your energy on helping that person progress and grow and, and do all that good stuff mm. so and it makes oh. you feel better as well I feel like helping someone's actually helping yourself. It's like an exchange, isn't it? <coughs> you learn yeah. a lot. Yeah, because you feel that, yeah, I feel good today because I helped this person and that person feels like, okay, I've been helped. But it's like an exchange of energy. But I feel like with 100 people, it's just going to drain yeah. you, isn't it? Mm. And then you don't want, with me personally, I like to give 100%. I can't give 100% to 100, 100 people. people. Yeah. Like I can fully give my 100% to one person. Makes sense. And then tackle it one by one. Maybe. It makes yeah. sense. Mm. Okay. And the, the last one that we like to do to all guests, 
You heard, have you heard this one? No, go on. <laughs> oh, this is I'm gonna act like I don't know. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> he has a daughter. Oh, you have a you have a little yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. How old is she? Five. Okay. We, okay. Hey, let's get, why are we all loving? This is gonna be <laughs> spicy. Be oh, go on. I found this very very hard. Have you got kids? Yeah, I got one little boy. Okay. It's disturbing. So okay. just prepare yourself. It's disturbing. I'm like, do I need to kill somebody? <clears throat> joking. Okay, would, you, would you rather leave your child with Michael Jackson or R. Kelly? You have, you have to pick one. T space. She's what? like, what? Exactly. Is this? See, that's why it's just. <laughs> oh, God. Exactly. You know what? My partner's going to. Oh, he's going to die when he sees this. <laughs> we always talk about this because. Do you? Yeah, we talk. No, not about that, but as in Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. Yeah. Because a part of. what well, a part of me kind of understands his argument because. Is R. Kelly really the person they're trying to portray he is and Michael Jackson because they're such great musicians mm. that you guys just want to dim their light? Mm. So you're portraying them as that. But they're mu for them to make music that amazing, I'm like, mm, I don't know, it's hard. So I'm like, think... so right now, because the thing is, the reason why it's so bad, because they're portrayed as pedophiles, rapists, all of these crazy things, mm. I don't know if they're really like that. So I would rather not have my child around any man I don't course, know, actually. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that is true. But, but you have to choose. I have to choose. Michael Jackson and or... Think, think, and we think know what this. they do. So R. Kelly they, you doing have, the they pee, have, pee they on have the girls. They have preferences. Yeah. And Michael Jackson likes to do the spooning of the, ch of the children, as we've heard. We've heard, but we don't know. We don't yeah. Know. That's the thing. It's hard. So um, I'm going to go off based on the music. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I would say Michael Jackson. Okay. Only because R. Kelly's music's a bit more. Mm, mm, mm. You know, he might it's a bit more sexual. Child, yeah, yeah, man said, but no, 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 Cookie Ew. Monster. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> but I think Michael Jackson, when it comes to yeah, with that, with the music, we've thinking about it. It's more of a sensible choice mm. because Michael is not shown interest in little girls. Yeah. And you have a, a, mm. a daughter, so mm -hmm. I won't, I'm not leaving my son with Mike. Yeah. yeah. You can't really leave your child <clears throat> with anyone nowadays, isn't it? It's, it's just a thing, man. It's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I just don't. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not comfortable in either situation, but if you have but to. But if choose, you have to, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I'd rather my daughter listen to Michael Jackson, <clears throat> you know. That's an Michael. effed up question. Thinking yeah. about the it's dynamics. It's really messed up. That's a messed up Who question. Who asked it these questions? It came from the brain of Heb. Heba. Heba. She did it. <laughs> yeah. What would she do is what I want to know. <laughs> I think she picked R. Kelly, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, because she's got a son as well, so. Oh, Okay. So yeah. it's the no, I would say, yeah, I'll definitely say only because of the music, because I don't know what the ins and outs of their, mm. I don't know them. So I can't tell you what was mm. going on. I might never got to trial where R. Kelly is like a convicted. Yeah, yeah, but then at the same time, like, I'm not backing him up, yeah, but you have to, like, even when my partner, when me and my partner were talking, because I was angry first. I'm like, no, nah, you can't say that. Mm. Nah, nah, nah. But then when you thought about it from his perspective and R. Kelly's growing up, the, the same way we were talking about Jeffrey Epstein's mm. partner, mm. It's the same thing. He's had a really effed up yeah. like upbringing yes. and things like that. But I feel like for some, because with my partner, he's really musically inclined. Mm. So he's just like, how can someone bring up all these deep emotions and be able to do these things? Mm. I think what people make the mistake of all the time, in our minds, we have a vision of what serial killers, serial rapists, pedophiles, that kind of them class of people yeah. in our mind we think of them as basement dwellers yeah, yeah. we forget that they are actually people your that next are, door neighbor yeah 100 yeah, and that they could look like your average mm. normal person yeah, pursuing yeah. their interests their you know their talents whatever it mm. is and that is it's not to say that though you know they, their preferences um doesn't mean that they don't have talent mm. And, and I think a lot of I mean, times, that's true yeah. as well. But I think it's one of those topics because I don't want to, I can't really, I don't know them. So I can't really make judgment yeah. on that because the or, media chats crap all oh, the time. R. Kelly, there was evidence though, <coughs> video evidence. But don't get it twisted. There's girls that still go to Dubai and get shot on and piss on for money. Oh, so yes, really and truly, but, but there's a lot of people that like to sell stories too. I'm not backing. Consenting adults but that's that what I'm saying. For whatever they want to get, get paid. paid. No, but it's true though. No, but the thing is. <laughs> Ty, Ty's, he's like, what are we talking about? No, but it's true. We should grow it up British and we talk about PP pee in Dubai. Okay, no, but that's what I'm saying though. But we don't know. No. We don't know yeah. the story. We we can't say. We so for me, I'm we, just yeah. I'm just basing it on. I love R. Kelly's music. I'll still listen to R. Kelly. That's not my problem. But with Michael Jackson, I feel like it's more child friendly. Some of his tunes that you can play around children. <laughs> but I feel like with R. Kelly, it's just explicit. Like we're not trying to do that. <laughs> I don't need my daughter to be bumping and grinding on nobody. No, yeah, right true. now no. it's long. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the only thing. Okay, you kidding? 
See, what about you? you? What are you? What would you do? You said your um. I you got said R Kelly. So I do R Kelly. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not doing uh, anything with uh, Mike. Sorry. Okay. So I'll, 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 fight, I'll fight and kill man. Yeah. yeah. No. Hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah. But we got a very interesting topic today. Yeah. Yes. We're talking about um, forced marriage, mm-hmm. which is a topic that is not only sensitive, but I think. Um, it, I, I, actually, when I was researching this, I didn't know that the UK have a forced marriage unit mm-hmm. yes. that they actually um, put out to be able to help in this context. So it's really, really good um, that that was that I found that out and that's in place. Not that it's in place and had needed, but it's in place to be able to help people that go through that sort of thing. Is that a new thing then, or the forced uh, marriage unit? Unit, yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't know know it's been around for a while, but I think it's one of those things where if you don't know about, this is why we're talking about it. If okay. you don't know about it, mm. how do you know where to go for support yeah. and help, basically? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so the support and help will definitely get onto where people can go and how they can get that sort of support. I think the first thing, as a complete novice to the entire area, I want to understand the difference between forced and arranged marriage. And I think yeah. it's good because, T, you have had your own experience in that realm and you've got an experience with that as well. So I just want to understand what is the difference between that. So Yeah, so I think a lot of people who don't know or who haven't experienced it, whether it's directly or indirectly through other people, assume that arranged marriage and forced marriage are one and the same. And they're really not. Um, the simplest way to describe arranged marriage is basically being introduced to potential partners by family members, whether that's your parents, your sibling, older siblings, younger siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, that kind of thing, grandparents. Um, and there's a mutual connection. Sometimes there's a, a third party involved where they're like, oh, I know someone who might be a good fit for your daughter, your son or whatever. Um, but the important thing to note with arranged marriage is both people getting married are consenting to this, as in they have said, I'm open to meeting someone through this process. Um, let's meet, let's talk, let's see if there's a spark, a connection. Um, and then they both agree to get married. Mm. <clears throat> so yeah. that's like a very, very clear. Everyone knows def- what's going everyone on. Everyone knows what's going on. It's just sort of done through family. It's kind of like if, if I don't know, Ben, you were like, oh, I've got a friend. Mm. And we were related. I've got a friend who might be a good match for you, Fizz. Why don't you meet him? But then a good match based on what, though? Because well, a lot of the times, because I've, I've got a lot of Asian friends, right? Because the arranged marriages that my Asian friends have spoken to me about, which kind of shocked me because we don't have it in our culture, mm-hmm. is marriage CVs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What's that? <laughs> marriage so CVs. I can explain a little bit more about and that. I'm so like... Bengali people do marriage CVs. Um, I've not heard of it outside of the Bengali culture, but yeah. basically it's just putting down um, basic details about who you are. So your name, your age, your height, your height, your, your o- height, occupation, what you, your profession, yeah, yeah. what level of education you've got. And then it has some details about your family. So where your family come from, where you live in London, if you're in London, I'm assuming it's London based. But if you're in London, where in London you live roughly um, where your family originate from Mm -hmm. in your home country, a little bit about your parents. So if they're working, their education, a little bit about your siblings and and that's it. And maybe a little bit about interests, like, oh, her hobbies are this or his hobbies are this. But don't you feel like that's just such a... But it's sort of like broad, a, thi- like it is because why do I need to know about your mom and dad when I don't even know you? And it's their like their generations, so it's like what their dad used to do. Like their dad was a farmer in a village in Bangladesh, and then yeah. it's like all this information for you to give to somebody that you don't even know that could potentially not even be your husband. What? I feel like that's a lot of information. It is, but it's a filtering process. So I I don't a hundred percent agree with this because I feel like. Um, you cannot match two people on paper like that. Yeah, 100%. So, but what it is, it's a filtering process. So for some Bengali families, knowing where the prospective spouse's family are from in Bangladesh is really, really important because there is, a, unfortunately, a social class system there. Mm, and yeah. your, lo- your the location where your family come from can automatically tell other people what your class is in the yeah. social system. Mm. So um, they use it as a filtering out process. Things like knowing what someone's height is, is quite helpful. I don't like short men, unfortunately. <laughs> so, you know. Allah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of men lie about their height. Yeah. But the point true. is, it's just like, 
for me, when my friend first told me, I was like, you can't be serious. But you're not like, making the ultimate decision mm, off of this document. Mm, what, what it is, it's an opportunity for the families to go, oh, on paper, you they, know, seem good. they seem like a good match because they're of a similar job role or, you know, like a level in job, not necessarily the same job, but they're in the same, maybe he's a, he's a, manager and she's a manager or she's a, yeah but that's the I mean? thing i'm not saying that there's anything wrong if it works for you it works for yeah. you but for me i'm just like okay all right i'm an optician you're an optician great well, only, i'm a doctor the, you're a doctor great you're a you know what i'm saying your mom's from this class my mom's from this class yeah. great your dad's got a farm my dad's got a farm great you're yeah. five foot seven i'm five foot two excellent and then what so then, then <laughs> it would you be know? you meet so yeah. you've, you know you've obviously got a picture attached as well it's not just yeah, I've seen some crazy page. pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see you, one. I wish you, I was here. <laughs> I'll try and find one for you. Yeah. So if you like the look and sound on paper of this person, your families will then get introduced. You get to meet each other. You start going on dates where, you know, you get the opportunity to meet each other. But for this process to even happen, you need both of those single people's consent, which mm. is, are you okay if we approach you? Are you are you ready to get married? Do you want to get married? Yes, no. Okay, yeah, you're ready. Well, how about I, I introduce you to some people and we'll start that? But then, do you not realize when you want to get married after you meet the person? Well, do you know what and, I mean? And I, second, like question, you have to feel the connection before. Mm. You, I don't know. Maybe so I, I don't know. I'm I just I'm just asking questions. Where, I'm not yeah, sure. So I think in a lot of cultures, marriage is seen as um, the next step into adulthood. So a lot of the times, what happens is you finish your education, whatever level that may be. So you were asking about age ranges. Mm. So it could be from the legal age of consent to get married, which is 16, which oh, I'm geez, a impressed. little iffy on, but. A little, a little, a lot. <laughs> I, <think, laughs> I think it should be raised to eighteen. But anyway, um, I think it should be raised to twenty-four. Hey, because I'm like, you know what? You, you, come there, on. There's other issues that come with it, and there was mm. a whole discussion. I happened to listen to LBC. I never listened. To it. Oh, nice. <laughs> there was a whole discussion about that because um, if you raise the legal age of marriage, do you need to raise the legal age of sex? Yes. Yes. Hundred but percent. Then, but, then, but then there's a lot of other issues that come with that mm. because now you it's, we're going really off mm. topic, but it comes it comes across with other to other issues such as underage pregnancy. Yeah, under you know. Consent, but you're right. At minimum, I'd say minimum. Okay, eighteen. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. But sixteen. That's just yeah. even, for me personally. Even eighteen is too young. Yeah. Minimum, I'd say twenty one. At least twenty one because yeah. you don't even know what you want. Who you are at 18 is completely different to who you, who are, you are at 25 at 21, yeah. or 21 um, or even at 30. So it just, it varies. But, it does. Yeah. But so the, um, the, oh the God, different, the yeah, difference so the between, difference, what's, yeah. the, what's forced marriage then? Um, sorry, well, there was another point that I was trying to finish at the time. What was I saying? Sorry, you know me, I do this, don't I? <laughs> Fuck, I, mean, I was talking oh. about um, how. So you were saying oh, yes. that they consent. They yeah, consent. So they're consenting, they agree to me. And then, you know, if there's something there they then continue but you raised the point about how do you know if you're ready for marriage so some families see it as like a rite of passage yeah so you finish your education you're settled in your career the age range can be from 16 plus a legal age of consent to marriage and over so you know it could be for example there was an expectation on me that once I finish university that I would get the next step in my life. The next big step would be to get married. And now in order for me to get married, I need to have a partner. I need to be introduced to people, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So that's why this process is there. I'm not against it, but I think there are some things that you can't openly express to your parents or family members about what you want in a partner. So I cannot, for example, say to my mum, I want to feel sexually attracted to this man. How do I explain that yeah, to my mother? Like, that's openly? true. Yeah. I want to feel like there's a <laughs> physical connection there. Like, how do I then say to my mum, if I did meet a guy, everything's on paper, great. You know, he's a decent yeah, guy. Like, he's, but I'm just like, oh, I'm not attracted. How do I say I'm not attracted to him? Like, <laughs> he doesn't give me the fanny flight. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How do you yeah. say oh, that to your mother? mother? You just say to your <laughs> mum, mum, I just, I can't do this. Yeah. It's not for me. It's not for, and so, but then people press you, like, what's the problem? Why what do you not? Mean? I thought, so I know it's really awkward. It's such an awkward process. Yeah. And I feel like there's sip. some, yeah, there's a lot of positives to it, but mm. there's a lot that I think is not openly discussed yeah. and it's difficult. And so. I feel like, even like with arranged marriages, I feel like, don't you feel like families always find themselves in between that relationship? Yeah. So like well, they're not... just reporting to their parents 24 seven. So it loses the authenticity of your relationship and yeah. of your marriage. It's a communal marriage. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Not, when you get That's married, so true. marriage was never a case. Sorry, moving along a minute. Um, 
Mm. Marriage wasn't a case of just, just two, two people wife. getting to marry. Yeah. It's never been like the 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 um genesis of marriage was about empires being built, built. and two think two two big entities coming together. Mm-hmm. So kings and queens mm-hmm. and uh, dynasties would be built f- and and forged from mm-hmm. marriage. So that's kind of like the the, the why are you smiling for? <laughs> no, because you know what? I'm, what I'm following oh, exactly what you're saying. Is that what it's I'm called? Following. Do we have a name for it? <laughs> Uncle Ben Rant. Wow. Okay. Okay. Guys. No, but that's that's where sort yeah, of like, yeah. that's where it comes and from. And the thing is, it used to be really common in England between middle class and upper class white people. Well, they yeah. would say, yeah. "I have, I am the the owner or the leader of this livestock and this land. I want." My this and my future generations to be of this sort of caliber, uh, this caliber, yeah. this cloth. I want them to marry someone like that. It's a there's a reason why kings marry kings, queens, and uh, rich people marry other rich people because they're vetted and they know what they're doing. Mm. They've already been in that, so it's no it's no reason why, or it's not very strange as to why people it's, of it's different yeah. classes it's, it's, come it's not, together. It's not that it's not, you're it's thinking not strange. more about the emotional. Yeah, aspect. not only just emotional. So just because you're of a higher class than me and I'm of a lower class, that's already a write off. But you don't know if our connection will be there because it doesn't matter where you're from and what you've got and what materialism or what status you carry. Mm. Yeah. We're talking human to human, soul to soul, spirit to spirit. Everything else doesn't matter because yeah. if you're that strong, you can build that foundation from nothing. And we're all born kings and queens regardless of what anyone says. I don't care what anyone says. It doesn't bother me, yeah. but it's what you, how you carry yourself. Yeah. Everyone's, all the females I believe are queens and all the men are kings, but it's about your actions and your behaviors to basically live up to that status Mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean materialistically (laughs) you know your your tribe or your this or your that or your race or your religion or your class I don't agree with that whatsoever because you're not born it's not your fault if you're born rich yeah if if you're born poor if you're born black if you're born white if you're born Asian if you're born green red orange do you know what I mean why is that such a big that's such a like prejudice and that's where the division starts well this is why arranged marriage isn't 100% successful because it takes away the compatibility. It mm-hmm. takes away the emotional connections yep. um, and just basically a mutual respect for each other because you're basing it on, but then, on yeah. quantitative mm. things. And but, it's just like, yeah, let's raise the kids. You're my husband. I'll do my job as a wife. I'll be the breadwinner, the provider. And that's all it is. But why am I laying next to you when you, I feel like you don't even know me? Yeah. Where's the connection? I mean, it's not that they don't... So... Not all arranged, not all arranged marriages fail. Just yeah, yeah. as not all mm, arranged course. marriages succeed. succeed. So I yeah, think yeah. it honestly <clears throat> depends on the two people involved and their families. 100%. Some people, yeah. it works for them, and I think that's really good if it does. Mm-hmm. For others, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. And again, there's other opportunities out there for you. But and sorry, one yeah. more thing. I feel like with arranged marriages, you don't really know how to be yourself because you have to kind of live up to this image yeah. of the culture. Mm. And it's like, okay, I can't tell my man that. I like to, I don't know, go out raving or I've been out raving or I've done anything, anything that's out of the norm of culture. So you almost have to hide a part of you yeah. that that frees you. There's nothing wrong with being a free soul and you want to do what you want to do, but you almost have to hide a part of you. That's not what partnership is about. That's not where you can build a foundation or a dynasty or an empire because that is based on a lie. Yeah. I should be able to freely tell my partner, listen, my husband, listen, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Yeah. You want to grow with me? Let's grow. We've all got issues. We all need healing. Let's sort it out. Do you know what I'm saying? Let's grow. Let's build. Yeah. yeah. I don't care if you're orange, yellow, green. It's not my problem. I don't care if you've got one pound to your name or a million pounds. Don't bother me. Yeah. As long as you're willing and you're open to understand who I am and I'm willing to understand who you are and we have the same like mindset then or similar mindset when it comes to willingness, then yeah, it will work. But other than that, no, I don't know. I don't know. For me, it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. It's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, for me, it's not. But um, today's focus is obviously forced marriage. And so we wanted to define arranged marriage first because there's people confusing the two and they're not to be confused Mm -hmm. because forced marriage is when one or both parties in a marriage are coerced into it Mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, Coercion can be in the form of emotional manipulation, physical abuse, threats of sexual violence, um, bribery. Is another one. Mm -hmm. Um, And it can happen to men, women, young girls, young boys, 
people from anywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and basically a lot of the times forced marriage happens because of honor, because of things like wealth, keeping the wealth in the family. Like one of the things that you mentioned, Ben, about two families coming together mm -hmm. on equal footing. In sometimes in that situation, it can be a forced yeah. marriage. Yeah. Um. To to maintain that, sometimes it's related to debt. You owe mm -hmm. people money, and they'll be like, "Well, I'll, I'm I'll gonna sell my daughter." <laughs> yeah. You I'll can have my that. Son, I'll clean. My, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, There's a lot of like sense. societal pressure, so classism as well. There's those reasons, and mm -hmm. and the reason why I say honor, and I'll expand a little bit more on honor. Um. What I've seen in the Bengali community is. What are people going to say? Mm -hmm. So they will mm -hmm. use it as a disciplinary tool for when they feel like their children are misbehaving <laughs> and they threaten, yeah. yes, honestly, they threaten them with marriage to go, if I catch you doing this again, I'm going to send you back home oh, and get you married off yeah. to someone. Wait, else. that's a, yeah. wow. It's like, a big threat. It is wow. a big threat. It's a 100%. big threat. I've heard 100%. everything up until the send you back home to get married <laughs> yes. so they send you back home yeah i've got that so i'll send you back to nigeria okay yeah, yeah. but you know what they do they send you back to nigeria or back home to the boys the girls it's a marriage thing yeah. but to the boys really? it's like yeah you're yeah. gonna yeah. learn because you're gonna learn you're yeah. gonna stay there for however long sort your shit out and that's it but with girls yeah marriage yeah only a, a man can control you a man well, can exactly. calm you down and we've spoken about marriage before and the cultural expectations mm. that the gender stereotypes but Usually a son will bring his wife home into the family home, but a daughter is given away. And the, and the way some parents view it in certain cultures, it's their responsibilities as a parent ends when they give their daughter away in marriage to another man. And now she is his property hmm. and his problem Thank to deal you. with. I like that in the sound you made. Amazing sound. Hmm. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So um, when I say they threaten it as a dis disciplinary tool, mm -hmm. as something to discipline you with. So for example, some of the stories that I've heard from people who've opened up to me are, um, for example, she got caught walking down the road with a guy from college. <laughs> yeah. Just a classmate. <laughs> yeah. no, no big mm -hmm. deal. Nothing. Innocent. No, innocent. They'll make up stories. Oh, they were kissing. And you're yeah, like, yeah. I'm just walking. So then man. word I'm gets back to her parents. Mm -hmm. Somehow parents here, they make a mountain out of a molehill mm -hmm. and they'll threaten her to say, if you're hanging out with boys like this, you clearly want to get married. So we're going to send you back home to Boy. get you married off. Um, and we'll find someone who's going to, you know. Tame take you. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. take you oh, and tame tamed, you. Yeah. Um, and then say, for example, after that, any trivial thing. So uh, one of the things I, I kind of briefly mentioned it in another episode, but I wasn't allowed to wear Western clothes when my dad was part of the family. Hmm. Mm. And I used to get threatened with, I'm going to send you back, back home, home yeah, yeah. to Bangladesh if I see you wearing jeans again. Um, as it literally used to be used as, so it, to, personally for me, it put the fear of God in me about marriage. I had a very negative view about marriage because I've always saw it as it's taking my freedom away. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. It's, that's not how marriage should be. Yeah, yeah. But it is used like that. Um, in uh, some other aspects of forced marriage, I think it was really interesting. I don't know if you came across it, Ben, when you were doing your research, but there have been cases of parents or family members trying to marry off um, vulnerable yeah. young adults and yeah. kids. And by vulnerable, what I mean is they have a learning disability or severe mental health issues. Mentally unstable. Yeah, yeah. mentally unstable. Um, and the key thing to take away here about forced marriage is the lack of consent. So someone who is not able to consent because of the state of their mind, someone who is too young to consent, they're under the age of 16 in the UK or wherever, whatever it is around the world, mm -hmm. and someone who just doesn't give their consent because it's not something they want yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's basically forced marriage. Mm -hmm. It's very different to arranged marriage. So it's I'm not saying that you know arranged marriage is this perfect thing. Yeah, yeah. It's got its own but at least it's a bit better than yeah. the forced marriage. Yeah. Because you have a say. Yeah. You have yeah. a say. And mm -hmm. forced marriage... If, if you guys didn't know, now you'll know. It's illegal in the UK and it's actually a violation of human rights. 100%. Oh, okay. 100%. Okay. That's maybe why the forced marriage unit was put in place because they saw an uprising of this sort of activity going on and they wanted to do something about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because a lot of vulnerable people, like usually it's younger people, so yeah. 16 to 24, mm -hmm. who Would are you say coerced. it's dispropor disproportionately women as well? 
it's definitely more so happening to young women. Bear in mind, that, so the stats that I've got, so something like in 2020, they had 750 cases yep. of forced marriage in the UK. 2020? Yeah. 2020. So it's still going, it's I know still it's still going, going on, on, but it's like, come on, are you guys going to stop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you know what the most shocking thing was? <sighs> Pre-COVID, it was 1,500 reported cases. Yeah. Sorry, 1,500? So 1,500 reported cases. Um, which means that because of COVID and travel restrictions, things couldn't happen. Okay. She went on the same website I did. Oh, did you? <laughs> okay. But like, it was, I was really intrigued by that. Mm. I was like, okay, that's quite interesting. So like, COVID saved a lot of COVID women. COVID saved a lot of, <laughs> a lot of girls. But oh, it yeah. is, or although, just slowed it down for yeah, them. Yeah, I think I hear about it more from the perspective of young women being forced into marriage than yeah. I hear of, of young men. Males. Not that it's unheard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Um, I guess another example of forced marriage is shotgun weddings. Oh Keep God! Your things in your pants, pants. people. Yep. Stop doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's when. Um, that's when. Um, that's when you have a child. It's yeah. when you have an time. unexpected pregnancy, and then, and then you're forced into getting married, married together. <laughs> well, that leads on. <laughs> yeah. That's a. That's a good story. We wanted to hear about your experience with this, because yeah. you have very, very obviously close to your heart experience. Yeah. So tell us what happened with you. With me, okay, so. After first year of college, so I've done my AS levels, life was great, okay. And um, we went to Yemen for a holiday because that's how it all starts, okay. I had no idea what was happening. So we went there, everything was fine. And then we ended up staying there. And then I think it was, I think my mom was just bringing up talks about marriage and things. And it was me and my sister. So we both got married. How are you? you were about 15? 16. 16. So just off, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a late baby, so I, oh, I okay, turned okay. 17 a bit later. So, right. yeah. So, so anyway. How young was your sister? She was a year older than me. Okay. <clears throat> so, I was in first year college. She was in second year. But, yeah, so it was around, yeah, so my mom started basically saying, yeah, you know, there's some nice guys and you guys, you know, should get married. Now you're at that age and you're big women and blah, 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 this and that. I'm like, ma, I haven't even finished my A-levels. Like, I'm <laughs> going places. Like, what do you mean? And then I'm like, well, so why are we here? Like, I don't understand what's going on. So then anyway, fast forward, I think it was about December. Um, that's when I met the guy. But I knew he's knew like, we were, he was like a family friend. So um, I met him in December. Bearing in mind, there was rarely any communication between us because he spoke, like, really Bush Arabic. Right. And my Arabic's really bad. So it was really hard to even communicate. I understood everything he said, but I couldn't really respond the way I wanted to respond. You couldn't express yourself. I couldn't express myself at all. And I'm all. guessing he didn't speak English. No, he did not speak English. He was like 25. I was like 16, turning 17. Wow. And um, yeah, and then that was December that we met. Oh my God, that was the worst day of my life. It was. I think it was like Eid. I don't know what it was, but it was a day where it was just celeb celebratory. So that was a day that he was coming with his family. And um, remember back in the day when we used to wear like colorful jeans and that, the oh, skinny yeah. jeans with the crown on the back. Yeah. yeah, I had like some hot pink ones. Yeah, I hate pink by the way, but I wore some <laughs> hot pink ones, got my hair done, went to the salon, everything, yeah. So mom was like, yeah, we've got guests come in, this, that. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he came to the house with his mum. And then obviously like I was sleeping. I had a nap because I'm thinking, I don't want to do this, but okay, whatever. So I went to sleep thinking, yeah, I don't want, I don't want, I don't know where, what's going to happen with this. So my mom wakes me up and she's just like, listen, you need to wake up. Like they're on their way. I'm like, okay. So then she, so they came and then she bought this big, big ass gold tray filled with all, you know how it is when like they come over and then you have to kind of, the hospitality has to be on point. So then she's like to me, go take it to him. Because in like Arab countries, a lot of the households have two living rooms and two entrances, one for the men, one for the women. So yeah, so I went to the, she, my mom came to the kitchen. She was like, listen, like you need to go, like go take the tray to them. I'm like, ma, I don't want to go take the tray to them. I don't even know who he is. Like, I don't want to go in there. Like, it's just mm. awkward. And then she was just like, no, like it's Eb. Eb means like disrespectful, like just go. So I'm just like, all right. So I had to put like a little scarf on top, but I had to show enough hair to show my beauty in a, in a sense. Wow. So I'm like, all right, then whatever. I'm just going to do it because I didn't really, it didn't hit me at the time because I'm just thinking, okay, whatever. I'll take the tray. I don't give a shit. So I took mm -hmm. the tray, put it down. And then we were just sat there and then his mum was there. I was there. My mum was there. And we just sat there and I was just like, okay, like, where do we go from here? And then he asked, like, he was asking, talking to me through his mum. So he wasn't directly communicating with me. So I'm just thinking, and like, you're not my type. <laughs> 
<laughs> like you're actually not my type. So I'm just thinking, oh my god, I'm marrying an old man. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm thirty now, right? And I'm thinking, twenty five is like my it's partner's not, younger than me. 16. But when you're sixteen, you're thinking yeah. you're a big man, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you want with me? Yeah, you probably just want to come to London town. Like you know how they're all obsessed with coming to the country. Yeah, and that's their ticket to basically come here. Um, but yeah, so then um, that was in December when we met. I was just thinking, no, I don't even know what to do with this. So I, and then anyway, as time went on. Everyone's getting excited, like wedding preparations and all of this. And my mom was just like, yeah, you know, he's a nice guy from a nice family. And, you know, his mom's really liked you when she first met you. Because I went to Yemen on holiday when I was in year seven and I met his mom. But I met his mom because she was family friends with our family. So it's just a so long... So she met you when you were 11 years old? Yeah. So she already had the plan. Whoa. I know she already had the plan. His mom was really strange. Like she made me feel really uncomfortable. They were moving chess pieces. Like, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then on top of that, I feel like because he had a sister who I was quite cool with. She was, I can't even remember how old she was, but we were around the same age. And then I met her when I was 11. And then obviously I went back to Yemen about five years later. And then obviously she had passed away by then oh. because she had, she got into a coma. She got really sick and stuff. So I feel like the mom was trying to basically replace her with me. Right. Do you know what I mean? But I've never seen this guy before. I've I've seen his mom, I've seen his two sisters, but I've never seen him before. Nothing. Like it was just a random guy to me. And um yeah, so then so everyone's just getting really excited and obviously, you know, my sister had her situation and whatever. So we're just thinking and I I had a boyfriend at the time oh at college. Gosh. So obviously it was a lot. And back then it was like, there was re the internet. We had internet because we, we were all right. Like we were yeah. cool. So we had internet at the time. So bless you. Bless Thank you. you. And um, so I'm just thinking, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do now because everyone's getting excited. My mom's making phone calls, this, that, that. Like people are flying in from all places, like the, all over the globe because I've got a huge family. So I'm just like, this is very overwhelming. You know when like, we didn't even have a conversation. Mm. Like there was... There was nothing. So I'm just like... So at any point, did your mom or his mom or someone in your family ask you, do you want to marry this guy? Mm. No, they just... So based on that first meeting and his mom saying she really liked you and I'm guessing he said, I like the look of her, she's yeah. all right. Long hair, light skin, great. Oh, do me a favour. Do wow. you know what I mean? That's, that's all they care about. But I'm just like, yeah, go on. So nobody had asked you at all? Not really. It's like it's almost expected of you. Like because it's your mum and your mum knows what's best for you. And like because I was duty. really close to my mum... I kind of felt like I didn't know how to say no. Mm. So, but then I, but two weeks before everything was set, like going wedding shopping and you know, in the moment you're just like, okay, we're doing this then. But then two weeks before the wedding, when everything was actually set, I remember bawling out. Like I was outside the toilet and then my mom came in and his mom was there. And then I was like, oh, I don't picture my life like this. I haven't even finished my A-levels and I'm only 16. And mom was like, oh, don't worry. And she was outside the toilet door and his mom, she was like, you know, don't let Satan whisper stupidness in your ears. Like it's just Satan that's not like allowing you to marry him and he's going to make you happy and he loves you. And I'm thinking the guy don't even know me. The guy doesn't even know me. How are you telling me that he loves me? That doesn't even make sense. But anyway, I remember just literally crying my soul out. And I was like, Yuma, like, I don't want to do this because I wanted to be a journalist, right? That didn't work out clearly. But um, I was just like, at least let me finish my A-levels. But obviously that didn't happen. And then the mum was just always there. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. So then obviously that's when I felt the, manip the manipulation because obviously my mum knew that I was with somebody and my family kind of found out. So it was kind of like, okay, so... You have you got something to hide? Mm. Mm. Is that why you don't want to get married? Yeah. AKA, is you a virgin or is you not? Bearing in mind, I was 100% a virgin at the time, right? Which was, we're going to get into it. But, um, so yeah, so what did she say? I can't even remember. Bloody yeah, it's so weird because it happened so long ago, but it's just, it's kind of blurred. But then I know, yeah. obviously, the feelings are so still, overwhelming. Yeah. But, um, so anyway, um, so yeah, my mom was just like, you know, he's a good guy from a good family, whatever. Everything's already set. You know, that's, you know, things are going to go well. Don't you worry. But at the end of the day, like, people are going to think that you have something to hide. But yeah. I'm like, I don't have anything to hide. I just don't see myself marrying this guy that I don't even know. Um, and then I think for my mom, it was just, she, I think she felt like it was an accomplishment to marry her two daughters at the same time. Like, because in my culture, being married at 16, 17, 18, 19 is... If you pass the age of 19 and you're not married, you're considered as expired. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah as, a, as a common theme. So like you're just very thinking, thing in so that, yeah, too, so you're yeah. just thinking, mm, that doesn't make no sense. And because um, people were quite shocked when they found out that I went ahead with it because I was so outspoken and, you know, I'm not going to do this and blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to family, like the manipulation and the emotional attachment you have to them, you're just like, oh, maybe I should just make them happy. Maybe this is what is supposed to happen. Maybe, you know, you're not really sure what you're supposed to be doing. But I know that I'm not ready for this. And I made that very clear. To, I know it might have been too late once everything was booked. Mm. But I, late. yeah, but Even I still, off, I remember telling her, my mum and the woman, um, the guy's mum, that listen, I don't want to do this. I don't want your mm. son. I don't want nothing to do with him, this and that. But she's trying to blame the devil. You is the devil, girl. That's what I wanted yeah. to say, but I, I was too scared, <laughs> so I did. So anyway, anyway, plans proceeded. You know, fam, all family came from literally Kenya, flipping Oman, Yem, like Yemen. We were there, London, everywhere. People just came from everywhere, Dubai. So and everyone's in the spirit of marriage. It's two sisters getting married. You know, it's it's cool, and so you, you know, it's a proud moment for you the family. Got married with your sister as well. Yeah. So both you got married at the same time. Yeah. Did your sister was did your sister consent? Do you know, one thing I'd say is I can't really, I don't really want to speak on her behalf yeah. because I don't, you don't, I just want to talk yeah. about my my yeah. story because yeah. it's not fair kind of thing. Do you yeah, know what I mean? that's, yeah. So, because she's still married to him. So, oh, wow. you know, but that's, that's them. Yeah, it's a But separate, for me, yeah. I'm just like, how it made me feel, I'm literally like confused because I've never, I've never seen a naked man in my life. Like, mm. what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do with that? What is marriage? What do you do? Yeah. What is it? Like, I didn't understand it. So, um, anyway, it went on. And then it was April 2009 is when we got married. Um, and then it was just such a blur. Like, it just happened so quick. And then I remember the plan was for us. That's I didn't wear a white dress for a reason. I wore a gold dress because apparently mine and his thing was supposed to be like a, like, um, like an engagement party. So then when I return back here and then I get a proper job at 18 and once I go to uni and all of that, I will now start bring, I'll sponsor him to bring him here. So that wow. was the plan. <laughs> so the plan wasn't for me and him to basically get intimate because you're only supposed to get intimate once you wear the white dress, right. in quotes. I, they said, me and white dresses, I've never worn one and I never will, yeah? White dresses are not for me. I don't like what it like symbolizes. symbolizes it's just disgusting yeah. but anyway so I'm thinking all right you know what it's not that bad because it's a party maybe let me just let me just do it because it's not like anything's gonna really happen because I can then think about my plan when I come back mm. well that didn't work out so we literally came back from the party it was huge literally we had everything like my parents went all out everything like in it, it was mad so I'm just thinking to myself but the energy was so disgusting like I felt like, what am I doing here? And I've never worn makeup before. So I remember on the day, so the ceremony was two days before on the 10th and then my party was on the 12th. So we uh, we went to the salon and I remember like I had my hair highlighted and, you know, getting waxed and all of this palaver, right? And I, I'm a tom I'm still quite of a tomboy. So I was very much of a tomboy. So I don't do, I didn't do all of that. So I remember they told me to put my head back and then they done my makeup and whatever. And then I looked up and I was like, me mm. wow. like green contact lenses eyeliner eyeshadow all this diamond like it was a lot and I was like thinking whoa this is too much henna like everything was just the whole shebang right so I'm just thinking to myself all right so now that it's, it's the party day so everyone's there whatever I go to the party and I'm shitting myself thinking I don't even want to be out here but we're here now let's do it I don't want to embarrass my mom everything's too late I've been she's given me the talk She's telling me, hey, do you have something to hide? And you know, all of that. So you have to kind of, you feel like you have to kind of prove that you're not you're what they say. Yeah, that you're innocent yeah. through that. <sighs> anyway, so it was the party day and stuff. The party was, it was really like airy anyway. People had fun, whatever. Came home and it was my family home at the time. So you know how it's a wedding and all the family come to the base. Mm. So we all came back and remember the plan was not for me and him to sleep on the same bed. So that gave me reassurance mm -hmm. that we're not sleeping on the same bed. We're not actually, in my head, we weren't technically married because we're going to get married properly when I come here, right? And then it got to, we got to the house and my grandparents were there. May God rest their soul, but they were there. And um, they were like, my grandma was like, anyway, he's your husband. You have to just get married. You're married now. So what is the point? Like, don't, don't upset him. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I'm just like, hmm? what does that mean? <laughs> what do you mean don't say yeah. if I didn't do anything? And then everyone's pressuring me like, yeah, he's your husband. Like if you don't, if you, you might as well just basically go back to his and his family's house. 
but that was not part of my pl- that wasn't part of the plan. That's not what they. That's not what they told me. That's not what they told me. Right. So little do I know. Right. The mum, his mum already had plans. Yeah. Because let me tell you what happened after that. But before that, so yeah, cool. I said, all right, that wasn't part of the plan. So I was just proper like, no, but that's not what you guys told me. Like, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do. What's going on? Like, mm. what do you mean go to his house? To do what in his house? So then my mom came to me in the corner and she was like, listen, she took some, because my sister was meant to have her white day and all of that. That's why her wedding was after mine, right? She took a suitcase out and it had all my sister's like, you know, nightwear and lingeries, all of that. So anyway, yeah, I know, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bearing in mind, I've never worn one before. I know you've heard the story plenty of times from other girls, right? Yeah, it, but it doesn't make it less difficult to hear. Ex- yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you hear it often doesn't mm, mean it's less difficult Yeah, to and then I'm just like, lingerie? Because mum was like, yeah, like you need to please your husband, make sure you smell nice, this and that. And I'm just like, huh? What do you mean smell nice and please your husband? I don't know what to do. I don't want to do anything. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you're confused because you're just like, what am I as a 16-year-old? gonna do with a whole 25 year old grown yeah. ass man like that you've met that i've just met four months ago yeah a baby he's a psycho himself. yeah he's a bit he was a psycho like he was an actual psycho like he was a living psycho i'm telling you anyway he would act all innocent and stuff when it comes to my mom begging her emotionally manipulating he was a weirdo anyway so mom was like yeah so we'll just put some stuff in your suitcase just you know just go back to his house and i'm hearing aunties grandparents everyone telling me oh yeah angels are gonna curse you if you don't go to your husband and husband i don't even know what that mean <laughs> what do yeah. you mean husband i'm 16 were you telling me i got a whole husband what's mm. that you know what i mean anyway eventually after like all of that i went to his mom's house because he was living at his mom's house imagine i get into the bedroom there's because we had a photo shoot before that there was like huge portraits of me and him pictures of me the flipping wedding cake the party cake rose petals on the bed like all these Boy. like bush like <laughs> like you know them bed sheets the bush ones laugh, but you know like, them I bush know what you mean, yeah. you know what I'm talking about innit <laughs> the them flowery yeah. ones with the, you know and it yeah. was pink a baby pink I'm like <sighs> I'm not sleeping on that bed I'm sleeping on the floor best believe I slept on the floor yeah because I'm not doing that because I don't know what you want me to do out here so anyway I remember I got back and I'm thinking okay so what does this mean now and obviously he's expecting me to be to get down and dirty with him and I'm just yeah. like I'm looking around thinking I don't know who you're looking at because nothing's gonna run around here so I just held my corner put my PJs on I ain't wearing no lingerie I don't even want to see myself in that let alone you see me in that mm. yeah. yeah so I put my my PJs on I slept on the floor literally wow. my corner yeah and then he left me for the first night and he was like yeah like I'm your husband this that that like you know you're my wife you know I'm entitled for for you to basically please me kind of thing and me those words are going way over my head because what does what that, that mean because now you're pissing me off so with me I was raised with five boys and I used to get very aggressive quite quick like in my tone of voice I can't take certain violations because I'm thinking what do you mean please your heart are you sick and the words I think certain words from your language sounds worse in your yeah. language than it does in English. English and yeah. it just sounds disgusting. Yeah. Like when he said, you're my wife, it's not that you're my wife as in you're my equal. It's like, you're my servant mm-hmm. kind Proper, of thing. Property, and that yeah. word really triggers me yeah. really bad. Anyway, that didn't happen. So for a whole week we were there, it was just such a, and every morning I remember I used to wake up, um, get ready, whatever, get on a cab and go straight to my mom's house, call our driver, be like, listen, can you pick me up? Go chill with my brothers, play on the PS2, run around, just do stupid things, mm. just be me in it. Mm. So that's, that was my escape. And then I would basically check the time. So just past midnight is when I'm ready to go home because I'll be ready to sleep, right? But I had to pretend that everything was okay. So like, but then it was very clear that things weren't okay because we weren't having sex. So he showed that he's, he showed his sexual frustration and he was letting his mum know and my mum know that I wasn't really oh, doing anything. What a classy guy. Exactly. So I'm just thinking, okay. And then he used to do like weird things. Like, you know, back home, even I'm sure in Nigeria, they have the same thing. You know, like they have the mosaic kind of glass mm-hmm. panels and you can kind of see through it. I don't get changed. I, I still don't get changed in front of anyone because that's just how I am. Mm. And I remember he used to peek through those those holes the to vent see, holes. yeah, to see me get changed. So I remember I used to put a pillow at the top and get changed behind the door, Jesus. like my wardrobe door, because I felt so uncomfortable. Because I felt like you're just you're watching me. Yeah, like why are you watching me, you weirdo? Anyway, so um, that went on for about a week. Then his dad suggested that we book a hotel so me and him can have our private time, right? 
And then I was like, no, I don't want to go to no hotel. Da, 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 da. And he was like, I'm not going to touch you, okay? I'm not going to touch you. Why don't you just come? And you know, all of that stuff. So I'm just like, all right, whatever. I am going to come. And you're still not going to do anything. Mm. It's not going to happen. And then anyway, we got to the hotel, whatever. And then obviously, because it was like a double couple thing. So both of our, my, me and my sister and her, whatever, we'd go out for dinner, whatever, whatever. But I wasn't happy. So I was, I lost quite a lot of weight. So I wasn't eating, like it was really bad. Like I wasn't eating, I wasn't really, I was only myself around my brothers. Mm-hmm. I couldn't be <clears> myself <throat> anywhere else. And then um, what happened after that? So he was like, what's wrong with you British girls? I thought British girls were, were like hot and you know, but you're so cold. Why are you cold like this for? Like, why are you not giving anything to me? thinking is this has he lost his that's me I just went crazy because I'm just like are you stupid I don't want you to touch me I haven't even kissed him at this point by the way he tried to kiss me once and I'm like what are you doing oh like he just cringed me out bad like he really cringed me out and then anyway so um so he locks so basically yeah so we got to the hotel now whatever so I'm thinking yeah T you got it like whole week he didn't touch you nothing happened it's cool Mm. isn't it cool Anyway, get to the hotel now, and we're by ourselves now. Please tell me why all the telephones are disconnected and my phone's disappeared. <gasps> Sorry, what? <laughs> what? Oh, what happened? It's like an ambush. Literally, literally. Oh my god! Like it felt. I was literally shitting myself, thinking. And you know when a guy has that look in his eye, and you're thinking, "Yeah, it's done for you, T. Yeah, because this ain't gonna run now." But in my head, I'm thinking, "No, I'm just gonna act dumb. I don't care. You can't touch me." No, no, no. Anyway, eventually it happened, not willingly. So he raped, that's how I lost my virginity. He raped me, basically. And um, as soon as that happened, guess what he done? <laughs> He's so sick in the head. Do you know what he done? You look so don't, traumatized. Don't tell me oh. it was related to the bed sheets. No, 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 okay, no. That, I'll tell you about that. Oh, he drank a glass of milk and said, <sighs> Oh. <laughs> oh, T, I'm so glad Why you does everyone... about it. Because everyone else here <laughs> they... is dying. <laughs> <laughs> literally and the people that I've told this story to even though that many years ago is the exact same story that I'm telling you right now like there's no I haven't edited anything right yeah. okay cool so all I feel is one nasty body just there and I'm just like and you know when they say oh when you lose your virginity your cherry is popped best believe I heard the pop because there was no fault it was just straight woof and I started shaking I was shaking so bad I couldn't as soon as I got off the bed to go to toilet I promise you on my life there was blood dripping all the way to the toilet, right? And then when I got to the toilet, there was only five tissue rolls. Imagine the five tissue rolls were gone. Wow. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, oh my God, wow. what am I going to do? What am I gonna do? And then <laughs> in, like, you just feel like, I can't call no one, I can't do anything. And then do you know what he has the audacity to do? He called his mum and his older sister, who was studying medicine at the time, to basically give me, help me with it. So she came with some tablets. And I'm thinking, I said, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go to my mom's house. I want to go to my mom's house. And then his mom was like, no, don't worry. Just rest for a bit. We're going to bring you food, anything you need. Da, 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 da. I said, I want to go to my mom's house. Anyway, eventually, after I cleaned up whatever, sucked it all up, I was thinking, cool, I just want to go home. So I got on a cab. <sighs> Everyone's face is literally overwhelming. Yeah, like, where, mm. where I'm just, <clears throat> oh, it's really shocking to hear. Mm. Anyway, so I got on a cab, went home, and then I remember my mum looked at me and she knew what happened. I know, and she never mentioned it to me. She knew exactly what happened. So I just started bawling out, cry, like, you know when you cry so much that you don't even cry no more? Mm-hmm. So I remember I got in a shower and you know in like back home, you've got them showers that you've got like the hole on the floor the top, and you kind of yeah. like, you just, so I just sat on the floor and I was just there, just crying my eyes out thinking, like, I'm actually not a virgin anymore. And... He just kind of took it. Anyway, so his mum followed about 20 minutes later. Why do I hear someone knocking on the door? Who is it? The demon herself. His mother. Yeah? Wow. Trying to tell me, oh, don't like, what, don't worry. He loves you. He's this, he's that. Trying to basically reassure my mum that everything's okay. Meanwhile, she not. Are you upset? Yeah. I'm sorry. Do no, you want no, tissue? No, no, but it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't worry. I'm all right. I'm 30 years old now. I've got a whole daughter and a whole husband. I'm all right. Yeah, but when I talk about it, I'm just like, yeah. whoa. But um, but yeah, it was very challenging. So anyway, um, so when that happened, I remember I was just crying so bad. And then one of my brothers, who I was really close to, he understood what, what it was, but he was a lot younger than me. So 
So when his mum was there, I just looked at her thinking, why are you here? Like, what are you doing? So she took my mum to the boys' living room. And then, he, I don't know, was he there? Was he not? I can't remember if he was there or not. But all I remember is I was distraught. Like, I was thinking, ha like, you know what when you feel like something's, happened? like yeah. a whole part of you is just gone. Yeah. And I felt it and the pain and everything. Because I did. I had, like, our parents don't sit with you and be like, okay, when you lose your virginity, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, didn't know what was going to happen. So anyway, so yeah, cleaned up whatever. And then I remember just crying. And then I remember my one aunt, grandma, well, yeah, one old lady that was there. She was just like, anyway, I don't know why you're making it a big deal. Like our husbands used to tie us on the sides of the bed and punish us. And we still never used to say anything. And you're here. At least he, oh yeah, he came back to bring me flowers. Yeah. And he's trying to tell my mom, oh, like I love, trying to manipulate my mom basically. But I feel like my mom was also manipulated anyway by them. Well, yeah, because if if his mom approached your mom when you were 11, that means that was five years mm. of... But I got my first marriage proposal when I was 11 by an 18 year old guy anyway, you know, at a wedding. So it was, it's just a normal it's, thing it's, in the culture, yeah, but it's not that, normal. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it is. But, but yeah. it means that this lady who saw you... She, yeah, yeah, she, she had it, yeah. She was priming your mom for five years before your mom took you to Yemen. Yeah. For yeah. this situation to happen. I'm assuming, yeah. Praying, yeah. whether it was spiritually or verbally, she's still done something. She's done something, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I used to lie about being on my period and things like that, just because after just that happened, avoid. yeah, because after that happened, I'm just like, yeah, that I'm, I didn't, I don't want to do that ever again. I've never seen a naked man in my life. So what am I doing with that? Okay. And then as time went on, he would do weird things. Like one time I remember I was sleeping and then he flung out his thing and he tried to put it in my mouth whilst I'm sleeping, right? So he was basically just whilst I'm sleep, you. yeah, whilst I'm sleeping. So I woke up and I remember I kicked him off the bed and I jumped off the bed and then I went to the living room. And bearing in mind, I'm at his parents' house at this point, and um, so I'm just sat there and I put on the TV because I'm thinking, "Are you all right?" And then he came to me, he said, "Huh? What do you think this is? You're my wife. Like you belong to me, basically. You're mm -hmm. mine, kind of thing." And I remember I took the ring off and I dashed the ring on the floor. And then his mum came, huh? Why are you doing that for? He's your husband. I said, he's not my husband. He's not my husband. He's a wait. And I'm cussing in English. Bearing in mind, they don't even understand don't what understand. I'm saying. But I'm so angry and frustrated. Yeah. And I can't bring this to my mom because my mom's trying to portray that my sister's doing better than me as a, as a, as a wife. And I should be doing this and I should be pleasing my mm. husband. But really, none of us are really doing anything because we're both just as confused as each other. Right? So I'm thinking, all right, cool. Time's gone on. I haven't, I didn't let him touch me. None of that. All of that. And then there was another time we went to another city and I love the beach in it. So I just thought, you know what, let me just go. I'm with my, my sister's next door. It's not that deep. Best believe he drugged me. <clears throat> anyway, let me tell you about that story. So obviously he's realizing it's been three weeks on now. She's not giving me anything, this, that, that. So I'm going to now drug her. And he tried to plan that with my man, like my sister's husband, husband. to oh. say, yeah, what's wrong with these Brit British girls? Like, why are they so like, like, why are they just so cold? Like, what, you know, I thought British girls were about it, right? Because a lot of times when you have, like, forced or arranged marriages, it's a lot of times when your daughters are fast and quick and apparently, like, they're sexually active or, you know, all of that type of stuff. Yeah. I was far from that. Yes, I had a boyfriend, yeah, kissing and holding hands. It's not exactly sex, is it? Do you know what no. I mean? So I'm just thinking, all right, cool. And then I was watching Hannah Montana. Imagine on NBC4, yeah? I was watching Hannah Montana. And then he was like, okay, what? Are you scared that you're going to get pregnant? Here, here's the condoms, yeah? And I'm, just, I'm like, it's not about me getting pregnant. I just don't want to, like, I just ignored him. I'm very stubborn. So I just continued to put the volume up. I'm thinking, I'm going to ignore your existence right now. So he started to get even more angry. And then, because I had the heads up about the, the drugs thing, whatever it was, it's just this, it's, it was this brown and white thing. I don't know what it was. It wasn't crack and, and heroin. I know that. No, but it's But like it was just this drug. thing. I don't know what it was. It just, yeah. yeah. But then he said, and then, so because I knew he was going to do that, I took it to show him, I'm going to do it and you're still not going to do anything about it, right? So I took it. Next thing you know, I'm thinking, see, your head is spinning, girl. I literally threw up all over him on the bed, everything. Literally, I said, nothing happened. Went to the toilet, brushed my teeth. Went back to the floor and went to sleep. Literally. Wow. Literally. Because it's like, do you think just do you think that just because you drugged me or whatever that you're gonna, that you're get gonna your basically way. get your weight and you've got condoms? Do you think I give a shit whether you have condoms or not? I don't care because I don't want you to touch me anyway. Yeah. And like we'll go out to restaurants and stuff. And obviously I used to cover my face back then because in Yemen there's so many perverts. A lot of Arab men are perverts. We know this. So anyway, yeah. So even if I laugh too loud, why are you laughing? 
Why are you laughing so loud? You want the men to hear your voice? Wow. You know what I'm saying? No, excuse me, wait, uh, we're gonna take this as takeaway. We're gonna take, <coughs> no, you can't laugh. Dragging me on the street. So it got physical. He was quite a bit like, but Abuse. I used to fight well, back. He was abusive I used to in fight. A lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, so not only sexually, but we're physically. I was I thought I was tough nuts in it. I still think I am. I was raised with five boys. We used to ruffle and scruffle all the time. So I the same way he would attack me, I'll attack you straight back. I don't care. It doesn't yeah. bother me. Even if you knock me out, at least I've hit you back in it, at yeah. least. So it started to get into into that type of situation. And yeah, my mum was aware of that as well because I remember she came to drop food once and I had um Bruising. like a tear in my vest and I had a bruise and she saw that I was losing weight and things like that but then apparently a man that man can change and you know he can see that he loves you yeah and they so try all to of that BS us in that way yeah 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 how, so, how, what was the story like of you getting out of that situation how did that happen I came back growing up British didn't it I came back to London tan so you I get said to so let me London? okay so let me tell you what happened yeah because remember this was only about just over a month that we physically were married right, right? So um, he told one of our family friends that he's going to take me to a prison for disobedient wives where they shave your hair and basically deal with you, right? Oh my God. Because he used to show me, you want me to tell you the letters? I'm your husband. You're my servant wife, basically. I'm like, sh like with me, I'm like, shut up. I'm not your, I'm not your servant. I'm not and me, I, I just never used to stop. I didn't, I just used to give it back. But I'm like, you don't even understand half the shit I'm saying, but I'm going to say it. And yeah. I'll mix it with Arabic words. So... He, he gets understand. the gist of it, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so so this auntie, I called her auntie, this auntie of mine, she was like, listen, this is his plan. This is what he wants to do. And bearing in mind, she's related to his dad, right? So she's telling me, and bearing in mind, my flight is booked to go back home, to bring him back and stick to the plan. Yeah. But I knew that that's not what I was going to do. I'm not living my life with that yeah. ever. I don't care if he loves me, if he doesn't love me. I don't. That's not love to me. I'm not having that, right? So I said, all right, cool. I had to be nice to him for the last week or so. I was feeding him. Remember, he even used to check, try to check my underwear because I said that I was on my period all the time. Wow. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see then. I'm just like, wow. you a psycho, man. But anyway, so when my auntie told me that, I was thinking, because hey, when you show the marriage papers in an Islamic state, yeah. you, that your husband's got all power over you. Yeah. Okay. And this isn't for any power hungry men to do that to women and go to Islamic State and marry them. Don't do that. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's they've got that power. So um, because I, I got the info on that, I was like, T, you gotta play it smart. Yeah. Because yeah. you need to do what you need to do until you get out of here. So I played along, sat on easy lap, hmm, kiki, kaka, hmm, all of that, feeding him. <laughs> yeah, didn't mean it, didn't give a shit, none of that. Got to the airport, my man's crying, oh, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> all of this, yeah. And I'm thinking, I can't wait to just cross the border on, yeah. I can't wait to just cross those barriers and I'm done yeah and at this point I haven't told I didn't tell anybody what I was feeling what I was no one knew anything nothing I was going through I didn't tell a single soul the first time I think I told someone it was in 2015 mm. from 2019 it was 2015 so um, yeah so then yeah I was nice whatever got here literally next day called him I said I don't want to be with you no more and then he called my mum, started crying. Oh, she doesn't want to be with me. You know, I love your daughter. Manipulating my mum. So now my mum's... And he knows to, the way to get to me is to get to my mum. Because yeah. he knows how close I was with my mum. Like, I'll do anything for her. Do you know what I'm saying? So he was just like, yeah, she's not this, she's not that, whatever. And then obviously my mum tried to persuade me to stay with him. And, you know, only a man that really cares about you, that he will treat you like this. A man can change for a woman. All of that BS. I just said, no, I'm not doing it. I don't want to be with him don't want to be with him I don't care and she was like look how many of your cousins are still married to people back home and they all got kids and they're happy and you know well they're happy and you, that's what you think yeah but, but you, you don't, don't know, know how they because they all talk to me about how they really feel yeah everyone talks to me about yeah. how they really feel but yeah. on the outside everyone acts cool well that's because our parents can well I say our parents that generation of parents and their their elders mm. consider happiness in marriage to be your husband is alive and he's bringing you home food. But he's not, that's the point. He's not bringing home food. We were feeding him. Well, they yeah. were broke. We bought his, I paid for his suit. I had a job since I was 14. Okay. So it's like, we paid for your shit. Yeah. Okay. So at least if your parents got you married, not even at least, but there's, re, you hear of these things. He's a well-off man. Yeah. Da, 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 blah, He'll blah, blah. He'll take care of you. Da, yeah. But yeah. it wasn't even that kind yeah. of party. But well, that's where his mum had, had manipulated your mum into, into agreeing to this because they knew the soft spot there was your mum. 
to sort of get to you. Well, true. I mean, I understand it from that perspective, but me as a mother now, no one can manipulate me to do shit for my child yeah, or yeah. to my child. Never, yeah. ever, ever mm-hmm. do but that your, to my your child. Your mum would have been under, not that I'm justifying or defending the actions. I don't agree with how it's happened, but your mum would have been under a, the weight of yeah, yeah, yeah. all of the culture's yep. pressure, all of the pressure from society, all of the pressure from yeah. her peers mm-hmm. to go, this is how you should do things. This is how your daughter should be married off. This is how they should live their life yeah. once they're married. Mm-hmm. So um, she was probably feeling all of that. I'm not, Again, I'm not justifying yeah, it, yeah. but I can mm. try to understand from yeah. her what she's doing. I mean, the thing so is, she didn't think she was doing anything wrong. Unfortunately, I don't. Think I mean, I don't. The thing not is, not in that moment. Maybe later on. Maybe I think that conversation I had with her two weeks before the wedding should have been enough for her to say, "You know what? Yeah. F everyone. Absolutely. I don't care about people. 100%. I care about. I broke. I don't. I'm the type of kid like I wouldn't cry. I was always everyone's rock, looking after the kids, raising the kids, doing their homework, taking them. It was me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It was. Because I was one of the eldest, so it was just normal, as you know, as you know, yeah. in in those in those backgrounds. So, for me, it's like I didn't. At that point, you, I don't feel like anyone stood up for me. No, but then you have to think about. But at the same time, I understand the pressures that my mum was yeah. facing. But I don't know. It's different for everyone, isn't it? I don't know. I, I can't really speak on still, her behalf. Yeah. Still close to your mum to this day. No, but not because of that. There's other issues, but I feel like I still love my mum so much. But the. Yeah. The, our relationships, the relationships yeah it's not the same, same. yeah but also, tried yeah. Tried yeah yeah also with like that generation of parents especially i'm assuming your mum and dad were the first to come over so their first gen you're set you were born and raised here i'm mm. guessing no i came here when i was five five yeah, yeah. but you so you're considered first yet i'm i get confused yeah. i think you're the first gen one but um our parents would have gone through that and to them that's considered normal so she, your mum would have gone out, through, yeah. you know, not having a choice, not having a voice in who she gets married to. Well, your parents. Well, the thing married. is, yeah, but the thing is, they did have a choice. My parents chose to marry each other. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So it's a whole confusion. So I feel yeah. like it's a lot deeper. It's it yeah, is definitely than, than it a is. lot deeper. Yeah, it's a lot deeper, and I understand it, which is why I'm not upset at my parents anymore. Because yeah. and the thing is, when I say parents, I feel like it was my mum that set this whole thing up. Because my dad wasn't there. Mm-hmm. He wasn't there anyway. He just gave called us and said, are you happy with this? Mum was there. She was like, are you happy with this? I'm like, yeah. And then he said, okay. And that's it. So that's all it was. Yeah. One question, again, one answer. So, but this is where there, there's so many things that you said in your story that I was like, false marriage, false marriage, false marriage. Okay, yeah, so yeah. the emis- emotional manipulation from your mum, you know, she's standing over. You can't have a conversation with your dad privately to say whether you are happy or not. She's coercing you she would have had coercion too i think there was a lot going on in the background that yeah a hundred know about a hundred percent um and you know she's passing that on to you Mm -hmm. and then within all of that you were also you just barely legal age for consent for sex and marriage and then on top of that the horrendous things that happened to you after Mm. Like, yeah. there's a lot there. There's a lot there. That, that, the whole thing I was just listening to and going, oh my God, this is a classic. Yeah, you it's guys all made, like tried to make me cry because all I'm, of you lot were tearing up. To. All really, of you, I'm just like, yeah, don't like cry. Said, it doesn't matter how many <laughs> yeah. times you hear stories like this. It's yeah. not, time. We've never heard that. You've never of heard. Of I've heard, I've, I unfortunately have been approached by many young girls who will share similar stories similar, to yours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, yeah. And I have I would count myself really, really lucky that my mum, my dad never pressured me for arranged marriage. It was never a thing. It was always like, find your partners. Yeah. Just make sure they're mm. of this, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, never had that pressure. But I felt it for relatives. Yeah. I felt it for cousins. Mm-hmm. I felt it for friends. I felt it for peers, schoolmates. Yeah. Literally so many girls, when I say disappeared, as soon as they finished their GCSE, yeah. they would A disappear. lot of people literally said, like, where did you disappear off to? Because I was quite... Not pop. I had a lot of friends. I went to New Vic back then. So I had a lot of friends and I was a main part of it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I just, because I, I thought we were going on a holiday. Yeah. <coughs> you were gone. But you I was gone. gone. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I came back a whole different person. You... I came back a whole different yeah, person. it was a and... traumatizing experience yeah. for a month. Yeah, yeah, it was. Of course you're going to come mm-hmm. back different. You and... mentioned also that there was an expectation, especially it sounds like from the women within close family and close proximity that your grandmother, there were older elders that they are saying that it was normal. just normal. Your mother said, it's not that big of a deal. It's just normal. Go yeah. on and go for it. What, that sounds that it was definitely like a cultural ingrained from 
generation to generation mm-hmm. that that is just what is expected, expected one exactly. of men and women mm-hmm. and two more importantly of what women should do for men yeah and there was no you were never able to ever say no this stops at this point it stops now mm-hmm. everyone would just be like it's not a big deal yeah you're it being a drama happens. queen yeah. and you're lying you're you're dro- yeah all of that i heard it all but i had to stick to my guns and i was and like listen i'm using not doing the it. religious aspect of saying don't let the devil whisper things into yeah. your ear yeah and like if you don't sleep with your husband and satisfy him the dev- the angel will curse you which is I all said, nonsense, by the yeah, way. It's not for true. It's anyone not true. listening yeah. and thinking yeah, religion that's what, yeah. is messed up. It's not. Um, I don't know of any religion that advocates for forced marriage. Every single one of them says you need to both you need to be of sound mind and you both need yeah. to consent and you need to be willing parties in this. Anything else beyond that is invalid. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people there's a they, they blur the lines between culture, culture and, religion, and religion. But I feel like this is more of a cultural thing. And I feel yeah. like the older generation are almost numb to the emotional side. Yeah. It's more of the oh, physical yeah. and get on with yeah. it. Have babies, be baby making machines, you know, raise your kids, feed them, that's enough. Yeah. But and then repeat the cycle with Exactly. Your but I chose And that's not what they to. count as happiness. So yeah. when you were saying earlier, you know, your mum was saying your sister was happy or, you know, they had this ideal or a scale of happiness. To that generation, it is literally, do you have a roof over your head? Do you have yeah, you exactly. several kids? You know, okay, now your kids are older. Now they're 15, 16, 17. Now it's time to rinse with yeah. the cycle. Yeah, and that's when I was like, nope, that's not happening. So, yeah. I f- and then I was shitting myself because I'm like, I told my mom, I said, I don't want to be married to him no more. And then she tried to like tell me, no, 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 no. Try, 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 you know, you never know. He's a nice guy. He loves you, all of this. I said, no, I don't want to be with him. She said, all right, fine. Just tell your dad then. I said, cool. Tell my dad. And your dad sorted it out for you? Not really. No. I remember the one thing my dad said to me was, what are we going to do with a divorced girl now? Well, there's that. that's a topic I would love to co- like cover one day, the stigma around being divorced. Cause... Hello, listen, I'm proud, divorced and proud. I'm free. Same. Yeah, I free myself. I don't need no man to define me. If the man is right, then yeah. yes. Every man needs a woman. Every woman needs a man. I'm not going to be with the wrong man for me. I'm, yeah, you're, for you're fear be- of being stigmatized. Yeah, divorced, listen, yeah. let me be that divorced girl at 17. Do you think I give a crap? I don't care. But at the Can time, it's scary. 17, yeah. yeah, but it's scary. But then he refused to divorce me. Imagine. Because yeah. he his plan was to come here. Yeah. He didn't care what it took. He wanted, he wanted to get to here. here. So Islamically, it took him two years to finally, because my dad then said, you know what? that's what you want and you're still sticking to it, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. So my dad contacted his dad and then in 2011, November, was when it was finalised. But already with me, I'm like, well, I'm not married to you anyway. And it's not like I'm ready to jump into a relationship with anyone. I'm flipping traumatised. I don't even know what happened there. Well, technically speaking, because it didn't, because your consent was never asked for, because you never ever actually gave your permission. Yeah. You were never married. Yeah. That, and, yeah. and I think it's fair for you yeah. to say that mm. you don't see yourself yeah, that I, way. Yeah, that's why for me it's like... It's invalid. It doesn't, mm. it doesn't mean anything. 100%. That's how I feel. It's unfortunate that that is a common theme that happens throughout a lot of a specific lot regions of within the world. Yeah. Because yeah. There, is a, there is a fear when I was doing sort of like reading and, and watching some stuff. There is a fear that when um, a, a woman, a young woman gets to a certain age, she's not as valued as when she was younger. Yeah. So they need to marry them off while they're very young. And there's like a term, definitely in the Chinese culture when I was looking at it, it's like leftover women, which is derogatory. Yeah. So when a woman <laughs> gets over... Sorry, it's not funny. Why is it called yeah. leftover, leftover women? Leftover women, yeah. So oh, when a woman a gets favor. over, I don't know what the age is, 20, 20 25, 20, 25, then if a, a, a parent's last duty like you were explaining, is to marry off their children. And it's predominantly for them to marry off their daughters. Yeah. So they'll go and they'll go to parks, they'll go to theme parks, they'll go everywhere with a marriage CV mm-hmm. of, of daughters, height, weight, and the, some of the sons as well. And they'll just be like, right, who can marry my daughter? They, they, sometimes Up for auction, going once, going twice, true. told to the man of, all, oh, di- oh, it's just all of disgusting. The, and the children don't have any clue whatsoever that this is happening, that their yeah. parents are actually doing this. So it's a big, big, I, I want to say business in quotes because yeah. unfortunately it's a business and they're, they're, they're doing things about it, but it's very, very, it's the dark side of yeah. marriage, which people don't, people don't always know about. Mm. Yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that there's this whole other aspect to marriage that is not 
it's not based on love. Mm -hmm. It's not based on love. It's literally based on politics and society and and you hear it a lot it's like what's well, what's love yeah. got to do with it love yeah. doesn't it doesn't matter it's com it's like if it works and if it's if you're compatible in other aspects other, love is the last thing that they think about yeah because they don't even i don't feel like they even know what love is it's all about because duty like the the older generation are not very um in the within the culture they're not very expressive with their husbands or wives well, well we're even with their children they're yeah not, like they're I, not expressive with yeah, their emotions like, like to hear i love you from yeah, a parent yeah like i don't think i've heard that being explicitly said to yeah. me by mm -hmm. my parents mm -hmm. so they'll show it in other ways but sometimes you just need to hear it yeah. or like are you okay how's your day how's it going yeah. you know i going? get like yeah. you've got a bag of kids but we're all individuals <laughs> mm. don't just feed and clove us and just be like all right okay that's you guys but yeah. it's just you need to understand that every child is an individual and these traumas that's what and the thing is with that's what i want to talk to, to cover in my podcast is everyone's traumas majority of the time starts at home yeah and it's always to do with cultural issues but that's why it's important that you guys are doing what you're doing and i'm trying to do what i'm doing and other people are too is to raise awareness because mm. we can't continue to hurt our children mm. yeah we can't because Imagine like I've got a five year old. I wouldn't even that would be a complete and I would have to be deluded to do that to my child. Mm. Who am I to tell you at the age of 16 or 17, 18, 19 even? It should come from you. Mm. Yeah. Let alone for you to tell me, you know, this is how you should be. This is how you should live, live your life. With, but because you've lived your life a certain way, you've had your, yeah. your life. Let me make my own decisions. As, and so, I mean, there is this whole thing. Um, I've seen a lot of discussions lately about parents toughening their kids up because it's what they went through and therefore yeah. their children have to mm -hmm. go through it yeah. too. Or they think they've they're what they've gone through is a lot less than what we we're going through. Like for example, abuse. Yeah. Like, you know, if you get beats and whatever, oh you're lucky my parents used to burn me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that yeah, that yeah look... it's true. It's true. Like if I lost the rubber in school, my mum my mum will burn me. Huh? Yeah. But you don't know how to look after your stuff. Well, You're lucky. It's, well, it's huh? like, you know, you hear them stories about when parents or elders used to talk about the journey they used to take to school. Yeah. Climbing through mountains and oh, forests dude. and stuff. And they, they would say, such, you're lucky you, <laughs> yeah. you got a bus ride to school. So it's that kind of stuff. They're yeah. always comparing mm. um, and saying, you've not had it difficult like I have. Therefore, yeah. I'm going to make it difficult for you. So life doesn't make it difficult yeah. for you. But it's... I don't agree with don't, that way yeah. of looking. I don't think any of us do. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, oh no, some of that stuff. Some I mean, I, <laughs> I mean the thing oh, is, no, some of that stuff. You know, you need some war scars, not to the extreme. No, no but the thing is, when it comes in. to certain things, like okay, don't lose your stuff and take responsibility for yeah, it. Yeah, we get that. Yeah, 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 that's fine. You don't need to get but at, Yeah, but when it comes to the emotional side of things, no, it's when it's different. physical, it's cool because. I'm glad that I got beats growing up. I'm very glad because nothing can beat me now physically. It's like, all right, cool. I'll beat you up. I don't care, but I'm not a violent person. <laughs> yeah. But if I need to, I know how to defend myself. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But that was, I don't, it's not like I do that with my child, but I understand where, where they were coming from. Not necessarily, it wasn't necessarily correct, but I feel like I understand yeah, it's where they what were coming they, from. Yeah. I mean, they part, so our parents would have learned from their parents who would have learned from their parents. Yeah. Like what culture was like, back in the day, it's so, it's so different to where it is now. now. Um, and the added sort of layer to this is that with migrant parents, so pe families who've migrated over from another country, the, the idea of culture that they've got in their head is frozen in time for the from, point that they yeah. left that country yeah. to come here. Mm -hmm. So that country may have progressed in culture and things yeah. have changed, but them in their mind will always look back and go, well, actually, this is how it was when I was growing up. And they can't see any of this that's going yeah. on. They haven't been in 10, yeah. 15, 20 years. So they, they f that's what's being pushed onto the kids that are growing up here. Mm -hmm. Um, but before we wrap up, I wanted to find out, Ben, because I know you said mm. you've not had a lot of exposure, shall I say, to ex to forced or arranged marriages no, in that way. Have no. you really never come across a friend, a friend of a friend, a colleague, a school friend, anyone in your, do you not hear about where someone has been persuaded, coerced, pressured I'm into be getting very, married? I'm very, very honest if I say, I can't say I have. Oh, good. Like, very lucky person. You know what, good. I was like, oh, you yeah. know what, good for I'm, you. I'm too innocent. <laughs> um, your uncle's too innocent. I haven't, unfortunately, well, fortunately, and, and, and saying yeah. unfortunately. I no, it's, to, a good, it's a good thing. It yeah, means, hopefully, us, that the people in your life are happy. Yeah, yeah. the girls, 
all of the like my aunts and uncles and uh, cousins all just be able to do what they who they do and you know some have been successful marriages some haven't so yeah it's all been of their own own accord but I've never even with friends the friends have decided to get married as you've it's been all, of their own choice they've been their own choice yeah. and as I it got, should ma- be. got married yeah. of my own choice so yeah. but to hear your story I think the bravery that you've shown today and just being able to to express what you've expressed is very very commendable yeah. and I think it's yeah we, um, we appreciate you being able to share that because it's not it's not easy to go back mm. and revisit those memories so yeah we really appreciate you sharing oh, that so thank welcome. you thanks for, for listening no thank like, you so I, much for honestly listening. when I met you last week yeah and we started chatting I was like Do you know what I need to bring you on and mm. we need to talk about this because there's so many misconceptions about a marriage yeah I, I only know about yeah. f- arranged I didn't yeah know about so forced, and so. I think a lot of people when they hear about forced marriages they think it's normal yeah because of the arranged marriage parts so I'm glad mm. we, we we spoke about that and hopefully that's helped clarify things yeah. for people watching and listening yeah um but no I'm really glad that you did it takes a lot of bravery to talk about trauma a in that lot. way a mm. whole lot um and it's such a personal experience that yeah. not a lot of people will be comfortable half of those events about. will have broken a lesser person let's just say that yeah so you are exemplary yeah so, thank you we thank well, god we thank god. <laughs> we thank god we thank god thank you so but much but we don't we don't want to leave people without info to go back to because obviously this is a really serious topic and yeah. there's a lot of things involved in it so i did a bit of research about support services that are available so if anyone listening to this is um experiencing this or they know someone who's going through this they are services available mm-hmm. to reach out to ben mentioned the biggest one first off which is the forced marriage unit mm. um shortened to fmu their website's fco <laughs> sorry that's wrong fmu.gov.uk typo on my phone um there's also more charities around as well that support with domestic violence related to forced marriages FGM in relation oh, to forced God. marriages yeah. mm-hmm. um, and just generally forced marriages and honor-based violence. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are Refuge, Freedom Charity, Karma Nirvana. Um, and obviously if you are in immediate danger, please call 999. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Speak up. Speak and you up. know what? It's, it's, I think a lot of women... Um, are quite ashamed and embarrassed Mm. to um, express their feelings. So for me, why I decided to speak about my story is because I want people to be comfortable and be the voice for the voiceless to Mm. get them to be comfortable to speak out Mm. and not to be in that same cycle. Whether you've been married 5, 10, 20 years, it's not too late to cut, to walk out of that and yeah. take your your power back. Yeah. Like you're not defined by any man. You're not defined by culture. You can embrace the culture, but you don't need to let it tear you down. And I think that's a really big thing. So I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that wants to talk to me about their experience or whatever it is. I'm more than happy to talk to them because it's it's really important. We need to protect our, our girls, man. Definitely. We need to protect them. On that note, T, yeah. can you share your social Socials, media platform yeah, so everything. that people know? Yeah how to get in touch with you. So my personal um, social media platform is on Instagram. I'm only on Instagram. Um, so it's Mama T with an X. And my new podcast should be out in January, but I've also got a page for that. And it's Culture, Culture Clash with two H's at the end and yep. two K's. <laughs> Ty will very kindly pop all of those in the video yeah, next thank to you, you so anyway. Much. So thank you so much for your time, guys. Thank Honestly, you. I've never done it before. And I'm like, I'm glad that I did. And you made me feel so comfortable. And you guys, I'm sorry for making you all cry, but thank <laughs> you so much. No, <laughs> really but we appreciate really it, appreciate honestly. how open you've been. Yeah, thank well you. You're thank welcome. You, thank it was you for amazing. Sharing. I mean, not amazing. It was eye opening to hear your story, but I hope that it reaches people and that they understand how to get out of that situation. Yeah, man. In it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, you've been listening to Grown Up British. As usual, my name is Ben of LDN. Hi, I'm Fizz, and you can find me on Keep It Fizz. And you are also with... T, and it was a pleasure. Thank you guys so much. God bless everyone. Thank follow you. us, follow us. Make sure you Instagram. follow. Growing Up yeah. British is not a joke. Follow yes. the page. Growing Up British follow it. on Instagram. <laughs> Growing up British.h on Instagram, yeah. all that good stuff on YouTube, Mama Hebs. 
follow us all good content so yeah yes yeah. and share share it with your friends who's going to share it with the corner shop lady everyone yeah. she's going to pass it on to her neighbor <laughs> she's going to pass it on to an auntie who man. might be planning to get her daughter married to a weird pervert oh see this so, is yeah. why you need to keep sharing <laughs> yeah, share oh thanks guys no, bye see ya. <laughs>